Hey everybody, it's Raven Ways. Welcome to my channel. So I'm going to talk about the Great Conjunction, which is the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter at zero degrees Aquarius on December 21st, 2020, which is also the winter solstice. I'm going to talk about it, but I'm not going to talk about everything. Okay. Because it's happening on the 21st. So I want to, you know, break the whole thing down and do a series of videos. Okay. So it's called the Great Conjunction because it is the conjoining of the two great planets, the biggest planets in our solar system, okay? Saturn and Jupiter. They're the biggies and they're coming together in the sky and you can actually see them in the night sky if you have a clear night sky where you are between December 16th and December 25th. All you have to do is look up in your night sky around the waxing moon. The moon is going to be very young waxing moon at that time. And look up and you'll see what's called the double planet or it's, people are calling it the Christmas star and so on. It should be very exciting. I'm going to be looking for it on December 16th and I really hope I'm going to have clear skies. Now, I really see this conjunction as a big deal. I think this is the beginning of the age of Aquarius and I'm going to be uploading a lot of videos about that um, between now and December 21st, just my thoughts about it. But I just kind of want to start basic with this video because um, it's still early days, you know, it's a while, well not a while, but you know, it's December 21st when this takes place. So I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket and discuss everything in this video. I just want to talk about you know how you can interpret it in your chart or what sorts of things to look out for with this great conjunction okay so astrologers use this great conjunction um to to um to look at history like astrologers see this when when saturn and jupiter come together astrologers look at what's happening in the world and it usually has something to say with what we will see in the world for the next 20 years because these conjunctions happen in 20 year frames okay 20 year periods okay so the last great conjunction took place on i think it was may 31st 2000 okay may 31st 2000 in taurus saturn and jupiter conjoined now it's in aquarius and this is the first time i think in over 800 years that Saturn and Jupiter have conjoined in an air sign, okay? And I think it's it, it's been like since, I don't know, the 13th century since you could visibly see them with the naked eye in the sky when it takes place. And like I said, that's between the 16th and 25th of December, so mark that on your calendar. Anyway, um, one of the things that, that Jupiter and Saturn conjoined do is what they do in your life and in the world is they introduce something permanent. Okay. And so depending on where this is happening in your natal chart, um, it's really going to be something very permanent in your life and you're not going to feel its effects right away. This conjunction takes some time to understand what its meaning is. It's usually a very um, constructive way forward. Okay. Uh, a new order, a new way of doing things, a new society, um, a project that y you embark on that is a permanent project. Okay, so think in terms like that. So for example, let's say you have this Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in your third house. Well, the third house is, you know, in a, you know, quite simply about your siblings, it's about your neighborhood, it's about how you communicate. So if you have the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in your third house, um, you might write a book. Uh, you might decide, yeah, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to start a new blog, or I'm going to start something online to communicate with people about the subject I'm really interested in. Do you know what I mean? Um, or you could decide um, that you're going to move to a new neighborhood. And, um, you know, you're going to start a new life in a new neighborhood, which is a, a signification of the third house. So I think it's really important to see this conjunction in both your personal life and also the world at large. And that's why I'm going to be um, doing a lot of videos on this, you know, because it's just, you know, there's just so many things that it can symbolize. It's, you know, it's, it's quite a big topic. 
So yeah, I do see this as the age of Aquarius. I think that um, it's, you know, I think what we see with Saturn and Jupiter, um, especially in the beginning of the conjunction, whatever is going on then is going to basically take us through the next 20 years. Aquarius is a sign that is very humanitarian, very logical, a bit detached. It's an air sign and it's okay. The, like I said, the first time, a con, you know, in 800 years since this major conjunction has happened in the air sign. So I think there's going to be, um, a lot of emphasis on the internet, um, different ways of communicating faster, uh, faster ways of communicating. And it's also really going to affect air travel. We're going to see the beginning of space age. We're going to, uh, we're going to have a, a new way of flying. Um, anything to do with the air is very much involved with this big conjunction, this great conjunction happening in Aquarius at zero Aquarius on the winter solstice. I also think that because Aquarius is not, it is an air sign, but it, it's kind of like the lost water sign as well. Um, if you look at the astrological totem for Aquarius, it's, uh, it's, it's a young man um, pouring a libation, right? Like actually making a libation, pouring water, right? And where that originates from is from, well, it's from the past really because the sign of Aquarius is, uh, was, during a time in ancient in the ancient Mediterranean region, it was during um, the flooding months. Basically, February was a time in Egypt and around the Mediterranean uh, when the sign of Aquarius, you, during the sign of Aquarius, there was a lot of flooding, and um, you know the land was was cleared. It was you know it was purified, right? And so I don't just see this great conjunction as something that has to do with. Um, um, has to just do with air. I see that it also has a water element to it as well because of its, of its ancient symbolism. Um, I think this, this conjunction says something about us cleaning up the environment in a very big way, but also I see it as a time of the floods. I think we're going to get some very wet weather on this earth in a very big way. Um, because, of course, the sign Aquarius in ancient times is, like I said, related to flooding, right? Uh, and so I think this really, you know, is going to be um, a very interesting time where we get into different water technology, not just air technology. It's not going to be just about how differently we communicate with each other or, um, you know, how much more involved we get with the internet. I think it's got something to say with uh, water and water technology and water purification and the importance of water on this earth, um, that we're going to see more flooding, that we're going to see more um, societies try to deal with this flooding and try to deal with this water and what to do with it and how to operate our society with so much flooding going on. I really think that that is, we're going to see that and maybe, uh, and maybe take a look at us living way, way above the water level. Do you know? Yeah. So, in you know, on a, going back to a personal level, um, you can also, you know, look at this conjunction as something that has to do with um, purification and cleansing, where you kind of clear the table, you know, you decide, that's it, I need to clear this out. It's not just an area where you're going to have a new way of going about things, but it's also something to do with um, making peace with the past and moving very forward very forward into the future with a very different perspective about matters.